let me begin by thanking the Foster family for the courageous efforts and dedication that you are making on behalf of your son. As I look through you and see you struggling for your son today, I want to tell you, I remember when I was on death row. Now I understand the pain and the suffering that my mother went through. But my mother was able to make it through that pain and suffering because she had the determination of dedicated people like yourself. I don't know what would have happened to me if it wasn't for young men and women like yourself that began to organize like never before. I can remember when they condemned me to die in San Quentin. It was some 15 and 16 year old young children. When I went to death row said, Suja, we're gonna get you out and we're gonna organize and we're gonna prove to the world that you're an innocent man. And as I was on my way to death row being tortured by the guards, I reflected upon what those young children said. And I said to myself, what can they do against the power of the state of California? But my friends, little did I know, those young children stayed with me and began just like the foster family, began to organize the community. And as they began to organize the community, one day I was sitting on San Quentin death row and they, was, they provided us with a little television. And you know, I had been an activist all my days in prison and had been a rebellious person. And the first instinct that came to me was, what have I done now? I didn't know the state Supreme Court had overturned my conviction. For the next two years, I fought to be free. I went through four long trials and it was there in my fourth trial after 13 years of being incarcerated, that the jury acquitted me of capital murder. And I said then, when the jury said not guilty, I said to myself after 14 long years, my greatest nightmare has finally come to an end. My friend, I've been out over 20 some years and I'm still struggling today. Yeah. And I wanna let the people of Texas know I'm not an outsider. I didn't come here to agitate any concern that goes on in Texas. Me as an American citizen concerns me. As I live in Maryland, I cannot let what goes on in Texas goes by with not giving my support. So today, my friends, you all are from Texas. Here I stand, wounded by the blows of capital punishment, but not slain. I stand here today to fight with you, not just in the name of Kendall Fossil, but for all men that are subjected and women to capital punishment. I'm here today because our humanity is being constantly threatened by the blows of capital punishment. The world is filled with the carnage, but we have no results. It is time for us to take a new course. In my beloved state of Maryland, we lost by one board. And in getting a vote for capital punishment to be discussed among the people next year. We got in the door this year, but I can promise you, we know the district that held us out. And that district gonna be target, and we're gonna fight with all our might and determination. And with your continued help and support, you as a people will not only make Texas a better place, but you will make it possible for future historians to write a noble chapter. Here are the people that stood in Texas some years ago and stood up by themselves, not in big numbers, but in numbers strong enough to influence all of Texas. And by making Texas a better place, you are making the world a better place. And I leave you with the words of a condemned man that I always say I keep the spirit alive. I listen to these words and I continue to play them back in my mind. And as I stand here today, I said I would never go back to another place and fight in the final days of a battle for someone who's scheduled to die. But I'm just like an old soldier. I just take a good lick and just keep on ticking and coming back. When the people of Texas say, Sue Josh, can you come home and come out and help us fight? I was on my way with a vacation with my wife, but I said, honey, I got to go fight. I said, the trumpet had blown. And I said, I don't care what battlefield it is on. I'm just going to answer the call. So I'm here to stand with you today. And I don't want to leave you with the words of a condemned man that really touched my heart and made me evolve as a human being and had been out over 20 years. 
but as I heard his words when he was on his way to the chamber, I can never forget him. And it goes something like this. The most happiest of peoples don't necessarily have the best of things. They just make the best out of what comes their way. Happiness comes to those who struggle, those who fight, and those who have tried. For only they can appreciate the importance of those who have touched their lives. We can't go on well in life, America, until we overcome our past failures, heartaches, and disappointments. The most brightest of futures would always be based on a forgiven or forgotten past. I say to you, my beloved friends of Texas, I'm with you now, I'm with you forever. I don't want to say wait, because I'm tired of saying wait for abolition. That word wait is becoming like never. I want abolition, not tomorrow, but I want it now. So let's fight, long live the spirit to, to liberate all mankind from the threat of death. Thank you all.